So you want to switch to Linux. Maybe you're a tinkerer, maybe your PC is getting old, maybe you just want to try something new. Whatever the reason, one of the first things you notice when you dip your toe into the Linux verse is that there are literally hundreds of versions, otherwise known as distributions or distros, to choose from. All of which specialise in different areas. So now what? Your first instinct is probably to search best Linux distro on YouTube and see what pops up. But then you're met with a bunch of different creators, all arguing about different options, and none of them can seem to agree on much. And so you're back to square one, completely lost and considering going back to Windows. Well that's why I'm here. In this video, I'm going to show you a super simple three step method to find the best distro to suit your needs. I'll also walk you through some examples at the end, including the choices I made to pick my distro, in case you get a bit lost. So before we start, we need to know a bit more about what makes up a Linux distro. You see, Linux is just the kernel, the heart of the operating system that interfaces with your PC's hardware. To actually make it useful, you need to add some other stuff, such as the GNU toolkit, a set of tools to actually do things with your PC. GNU is also where all those long copy pastas come from telling you that the correct term is GNU slash Linux and blah blah blah. Most people just call it Linux though because we couldn't care less about what the basement dwellers think and that kind of correction has just become a meme at this point. Anyway, the full breakdown of a Linux distro has about a dozen components but we'll be shoving them into three entities for the purpose of this video. When you think of a distro as a combo of these three entities, the array of choices collapses from 600 plus into no more than five for each, meaning you just need to choose what pieces you want and then find the distro that matches. Simple. Now, of course, this method doesn't encompass every single distro, but it does hit the ones worth using as a daily driver. So the first choice to make is going to be what I'm calling the core of the distro, i.e. what it's based on. You see, most distros are actually just variations on a select few old distributions with some extra stuff added. So let's run through the list and I'll give you the key info for each of them. Debian. So Debian is one of the oldest and most well-established distros. Since its community is so large, any app made for Linux will have a Debian compatible version and you're basically guaranteed to find the solutions to any problems you might run into by looking on online forums. Other than that, the number one takeaway for Debian is that it's super stable, like literally rock solid stable, making it the distro of choice for most servers. Ubuntu. Ubuntu is actually one of the many children of Debian and shares its popularity and compatibility. Why am I including it here instead of just saying Debian? Well, because it fathered its own massive array of distros and a good chunk of those are very popular go-to choices that you may end up choosing after this video. It's also aimed at anyone who just wants something that works out of the box and doesn't care about faffing around with the system in the slightest. Not that Debian is that hard, of course, but Ubuntu is really specifically made for beginners. Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Another rock solid choice for stability and compatibility, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which I'm going to call RHEL from here on out, is the distro of choice for AWS, CERN, and the US military. Why choose this and not Debian? RHEL, as the name indicates, is backed by a corporate entity. Now on the upside, this means it's reliable, especially given the demands of its customers. However, I can understand that some people might still see this as a red flag. If that's your case, you might be dyslexic because it's definitely red hat and not red flag. But anyway, as an individual, it's highly unlikely that you would actually use RHEL itself, but rather Fedora, a project based on red hat and sponsored by the company while being maintained by the community. Arch. Ah yes, the infamous Arch by the way. With its DIY setup, Arch by the way is the distro of choice for anyone who either wants a super minimal operating system over which they have complete control, or someone who spends all their time configuring their setup and then flexing said setup to other Arch by the way users online. Not recommended for beginners as it's very hands-on and the community isn't the friendliest. If you want to mess around, then go for it. 
but be warned that you may end up breaking your system from time to time. Now, you could technically use these distros as they are, if you're okay with their default desktop environments. So, what's a desktop environment? I'm glad you asked. So our next component is going to be the desktop environment, i.e. the bit that's visible, more or less. To put it simply, your desktop environment encompasses everything related to how your desktop looks and behaves. Once again, I've come up with a list of five of the most popular choices. Now be warned, I have only used four of these five in the past, and I'll tell you which as I list them. But for the other one, take what I say with a grain of salt. Cinnamon. This was actually my first experience with Linux, because it was installed in the computer lab in my old school. It's made by the Linux Mint team, which is a very solid distro by the way, and it's honestly a very good experience. It's good for people who want something familiar to the Windows-like classic desktop paradigm, and it offers some basic customization options. Overall, a solid choice, and honestly, if you were to pick this, good choice. GNOME. Use this one a bit, and I didn't like it. I only put it here because it's still popular for some reason. It used to be the GOAT of desktop environments, and some people still swear by it, but the devs kind of went a bit mad with version 3, and seemingly became hellbent on removing anything useful. This caused a whole bunch of projects to appear with the sole purpose of making a better version of GNOME. Cinnamon is one of those projects. I really ought to challenge myself to try it again for a more in-depth review though, so if you want to see that in 2025, hit that subscribe button, and who knows, maybe I'm being a bit harsh. Budgie. Another desktop environment for GNOME refugees, this one is supposedly quite polished and seems well loved by the community. I can't see the way though, because I actually haven't tried it yet. KDE. If you ask me, this right here is the GOAT of desktop environments simply because of the extent to which you can customise it, meaning that you can emulate the look and feel of any desktop environment with relative ease. It does have the occasional bug, but nothing major. I've been daily driving KDE for two years now, and I swear by it. Arguably, the only reason GNOME is still in the top spot is because KDE's release schedule isn't as regular, which can lead to problems for distro developers. XFCE Super lightweight, XFCE is meant for PCs that are potatoes among potatoes, but is also relatively well customizable. I've used it once on a Raspberry Pi, and I have no real complaints. Although again, unless your PC struggles to open Minesweeper, I wouldn't bother with it. Now there are of course a lot more desktop environments out there, and if you think I missed a good one out, leave it down in the comments. I'm just trying to keep this guide simple, so I can't include them all. So you could end this video here actually, but you shouldn't. While picking a combo of a core and a desktop environment from those I've shown you and installing the corresponding distro is basically all there is to it, there are some extra things that you might want to consider. So this is where I'm going to shove all the extra bits of info and specific use cases that are important to consider, but not big enough to have their own categories. So make sure to keep on watching because you might fall into one of these. Hacking and pen testing. So anyone who knows a bit about Linux will know what I'm going to say here. If you want to get into cybersecurity, Kali Linux, a Debian based distro, has a complete hackers toolkit out of the box. Just don't do anything illegal. Only the CIA are allowed to do illegal things. Gaming. If you play a lot of games, then be warned that Linux isn't perfect for you, although it's moving forward in leaps and bounds notably thanks to Valve's Proton, and let's not forget the Wine team. There are some games that don't work, especially those with kernel level anti-cheat. To know if a specific game will work or not, you can check ProtonDB for more info. If you still want to go ahead, Pop! OS is supposed to be the best choice as it comes with a bunch of gaming features out of the box. Specific hardware. If your target machine uses a different architecture to x86, which is what's in most desktops and laptops, then check if your distro of choice supports it. Luckily, ARM support is actually better than Windows, so you shouldn't have too much trouble. And that concludes our three-step method. So the process is simple. Check your wildcards, then, if you're all clear there, go ahead and pick a combo of the other two parts. For example, here's what I did. 
I wanted something dead stable so that the only person breaking my system would be me. I also needed to not worry about support in case of a problem. That narrowed down my choices for a core to Debian and Ubuntu, although were I to do this again I wouldn't rule out Fedora. I was also a beginner at the time of course, so I wanted to go for the easiest possible option with a community that wouldn't bite my head off if I made a mistake. So I opted for Ubuntu. Meanwhile, I'm a big fan of customization. I want my desktop looking and behaving exactly as I want with no compromises. So for my desktop environment, I of course chose KDE. I of course wasn't really part of any edge case and so I picked Kubuntu and it served me really well for two years. And that's really what you should take away from this video. There'll always be people who'll be like, why did you pick that one? That was a stupid choice, you moron. But at the end of the day, as long as your PC is doing what you want it to do with minimal hassle, you made the right choice. If you like this video, then make sure to smash that subscribe button, leave a like, and check out my other Linux videos on the right. For now though, I'm definitely not a lizard, and thanks for watching.